Hi, I'm Gary from Pennsylvania, and for years I've been working with wood gasification and trying to adapt it to run internal combustion engines. Now, this type of technology has been around for well over 100 years, uh, but recently there's been a lot of interest in how to take wood and convert it into a motor fuel. And I've been working with uh, this gasification and I've found that charcoal is one of the easiest forms of wood to convert into an engine fuel. And I'd like to show you this very simple device I've built. Uh, it's a tin can, basically, with an air inlet. Uh, it's very simple to operate. It uses charcoal, which is very simple to make. As a matter of fact, behind me are some drums where I make my charcoal for this engine. Um, very simple concept, and I've called it the simple fire. And I've adapted my gravely walk-behind tractor to run on it. It's a single-cylinder engine. And the system is working. It's experimental. I've run it probably for a total of 10 hours. Uh, but something I think is uh, worth looking into if you're interested in alternative energy. So I'm going to grab the camera and show you some of the components of this simplifier, how it's hooked up to the tractor. And now I'm going to load it up and get it fired up. First of all, the simplifier has it's a tin can steel. And uh, let me zoom back out here. In this case, it's a six gallon can. The taller the can, of course, the longer your run time. So I can get about a half hour of run time out of this can of charcoal before I have to refill it. It's composed of the air inlet. This is where the air enters into the steel container where the charcoal is, and that's where it's lit and it burns. From there, the charcoal gas and comes up through the, uh, the charcoal inside the reactor and comes out the gas outlet. This is where the charcoal gas comes out through the hose and into the filter. Now, the filter is where the charcoal dust is captured so it doesn't get into the engine. And it's simply a can with a airtight lid. And for my filter medium, I use a piece of foam rubber, open-celled foam rubber. Seems to work very well in trapping the dust. Then from the, uh, the filter, the gas filter, it goes down through the hose and into the carburetor. And this is probably one of the hardest parts of the whole device to make is to fabricate the, the valve mixing system to run an internal combustion engine. Now notice the carburetor has not been changed at all. I can run on gasoline or I can run on wood gas. So you aren't messing the carburetor. All you're doing is changing how the wood gas mixes with the air. In this case, this valve is a butterfly valve which controls the amount of air coming from the air filter to mix with the wood gas to create the correct stoichiometric mixture of burnable gas that will then get sucked through the carburetor and run the engine. Now another important component of this simplifier is the exhaust return. And you'll notice that on the exhaust I have a T. The T comes up here and there's a gate valve. The gate valve is opened very slightly to allow some of the exhaust gas to go back into the reactor. This exhaust gas cools down the extremely hot charcoal oxygen oxidation that happens inside the simplifier, and it also gives it some carbon dioxide, which is essentially a fuel that's reacted on by the hot carbon to make more carbon monoxide, which is the fuel that's actually burning inside this engine. So, I'm going to put the camera back up. And let's get this thing filled up. The lid must be an airtight. It must have a seal because you can't have oxygen mixing in with your wood gas, otherwise you create an explosive mixture in your line to the engine, and that's not a good idea. Oh, 
before I do this, I want to show you inside the reactor is the nozzle. It's so dark in here you may not be able to see it, but I'll unscrew it, bring it up to the camera, and here you can see the nozzle. Uh, it's just a piece of steel pipe. On the end of it, I put a piece of stainless steel to protect it. Stainless steel does not oxidize as quickly as regular mild steel. And you can see that it gets pretty hot in there, and, and the uh, stainless steel is starting to corrode. Uh, I can just keep extending this out a little bit, and eventually this will be thrown away, and I'll replace it. This is considered a consumable item. Uh, after about 10 runs with this, that's the shape it's in. I expect more. I probably didn't let enough exhaust gas in, and that's why it's burning up. But this just screws into the air inlet. And then the whole unit sits on the tractor. The fuel is charcoal. The largest pieces are three quarters of an inch in diameter. The smallest ones are about eighth of an inch. And this gets filled to the very top. Now after I've run about half an hour, some of the charcoal will get burned up, but it will only be down to about this level. Once it drops below that, then the heat from the fire gets too hot and it starts to actually melt the, uh, the exhaust hose, which is, in this case, uh, some pump hose. Uh, another adaption I made was I put a piece of plate steel on the lid to keep the engine from sucking pieces of charcoal up that get into the air filter or into the, uh, the gas filter. So it just kind of diverts the gas away out to the edges so it doesn't get sucked up into the filter. These clamps then hold down the lid. I must stress again, it's got to be airtight. And then I place, because this is a walk-behind tractor with two wheels, it tends to really jump around when you hit bumps and uh, divots in the yard, and I've got a lot of those around here. So I'll put the lid on the filter. Clamp it in place. The gas hose is just plain sump pump hose, very simple, easy to get at any hardware store. Hook up the exhaust return. I want to turn off the gas valve. And now we're ready to light the simplifier. Now to do that, I'm going to use a little battery operated fan. All I do is pull this hose off, place it on there, turn on the fan, we're lit. It'll take about one minute for the charcoal in there to get enough mass and heat to form good wood gas or charcoal gas to run the engine. So we got a few minutes here. But if you're interested in more information on this type of uh, simplifier, uh, go to driveonwood.com and go to the files section. And there I have a, a kind of instruction manual on how I built this and things to think about when building it. So if you're interested in trying this, I uh, recommend you go there and check it out. There's also a forum on that, on that website where we, we uh, other people that have made this type of device can talk about it. Now, one other thing. Before I used the fan, I started this engine using gasoline, dripping it into the uh, into the uh, intake manifold. You can use that to start this. I've done it 
quite a bit. This is actually the first time I've ever used this fan, so I'm hoping it works pretty well. So, it's been about a minute, let's give it a try. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, now I'm ready to open up the exhaust valve. I have a mark on here. I take it around one full turn and then another quarter. And that will allow the air to cool down, the exhaust to cool down my hot fire. Take a look in there. There it is with no exhaust gas. And here it is when I start to open up the exhaust gas. It cools it right down. One other thing I forgot to mention. Idle this down a little bit more. Is on my... On my filter I have a little temperature gauge. It's in Celsius, but when that hits around 60 degrees Celsius, I know my gas is starting to get hot, and that means that my charcoal layer is starting to get low, so it's time to refill uh, to keep going. And refilling is simply turning the engine off, unhooking these latches, opening it up, and dumping more charcoal in, putting the latches back on. I use the fan just for a few seconds, and Away we go again. Uh, no danger of explosion here. So, I'm ready to start mowing. Take off the microphone.